Hi, welcome to NumPy tutorial series. In this lesson, we will cover element indexing in NumPy arrays. Subscribe to Bucket as a teacher and never miss new educational videos. I guess indexing is like addressing the element. It allows us to reference some particular cell, read its value or modify it. Right. First, we will start with one-dimensional arrays. In fact, they are just sequences, like one row with several columns. Here in the code, we create an array with three elements, one, two, and three. And then we read the value of the first element. Its index is zero. It means NumPy has zero-based indexes, like, for example, Java. You should remember this and keep in mind each time you use indices. So indices of array elements in the example are 0, 1 and 2. And if we try accessing element with index 3, we get index out of bounds error. That's because there is no such index in the example. The largest index is 2. Previous slides should be simple to understand, especially if you have some other programming language experience. However, where NumPy shines is negative indices. Negative indices make it very easy to access last elements. The last element always has an index equal to minus 1. The second element from the end has index minus 2 and so on. So, in our example, 3 is the last index. That's why it can be accessed via index minus 1. 2 is the next from the end, so its index is minus 2. As with positive indices with negative ones, you can still get index out of bounds error if you try accessing element with index that does not exist. So, be careful and draw your array together with indices before you feel comfortable with negative indexing. What about two-dimensional array? Do we need two indices to address one element? Two-dimensional array is like a table with rows and columns. So, in this case, we indeed need two indices to address each value. The first index refers to the row and the second to the column. Again, indices are zero-based, so in our example we have two rows with indices 0 and 1 and three columns with indices 0, 1 and 2. So, for example, element with indexes 0, 0 is the one in the row number 0 and column number 0. It is the first element. Element with indices 1 and 2 is the element in the row number 1 and the column number 2. It is value 6. Negative indices can also be used in two-dimensional arrays. Moreover, you can mix together both positive and negative indices. The last example reads the last element in the row with index 0, so it is free. Negative indices don't seem easy to me. Let's discuss some more examples. The main rule is that minus 1 is the last row and last column. So, element with indices minus 1, minus 1 is the one in the last row and the last column, it is 6. The element with indices minus 1, minus 2 is the element in the last row and the second last column, it's 5. Stop the video and analyze element indices in the table on the left. In two-dimensional arrays, you also can't refer to the non-existing indices. I remember. In such situations, we will see index is out of bounds error. Well done! For now, we have only read element values. But I guess we can also modify elements. Sure. You can access element via indexing and assign new value to it. In this example, we have one-dimensional array. One, two, three. We first take the element with index 0, which is 1, and assign it a new value, 4. We then print the array and see that 1 got replaced with 4. As a next step, we take the last element, which is 3, and assign it a new value, 5. Then we again print the array and see that the last element is now equal to 5. In Java, we use two pairs of brackets to separate row index from column index, not comma like in NumPy. The common convention is to separate indices with comma, but you can also use two pairs of brackets. It's not so efficient way in terms of code readability, but it won't cause any errors. That's it for today. 
Please create several arrays and try accessing different elements with both positive and negative indices. In the next lesson, you will take it to the next level by learning about array slicing. Please subscribe to Budge as a teacher and don't miss new lessons. As always, please let me know in comments below if you need some more detailed explanation on topics we have covered. See you in the next lesson. Bye!